privilege to see, um, see all that God is doing. Uh, amen. God, God is doing some amazing things. And sometimes we, um, uh, because of stuff, we miss the things that God is doing. True? True. I don't know if um, anyone see what was happening at Waitangi. Did you see that on the news? Who went to Waitangi? Yeah, there's some amazing stuff happening at Waitangi of, of God's movement of the spirit of his spirit amongst all people to see his kingdom come. Not just um, spasms or things that just crop and pop, but things that are actually about God's kingdom coming and reigning again. I have a sense of that God's spirit is moving by by, by uh, no, no longer being drip-fed, as I say, but there's going to be an amazing outpouring of God's Spirit on His people. And are we ready for that? Amen. Yeah, amen. Yeah, we, we're ready for that. Yeah. We, we've got to be ready for that, because eh? if you're not ready, you're going to get left behind. That's what's going to happen. You're going to get left behind. How do I know? It's all in here. His word. word. Tells me that we're going to get left behind. Revelation tells that all nations and all tongues will be at that time. Not selective nations or selective tongues, but all nations and all tongues will be there. So Waitangi was a wonderful experience. Well, we had the worship uh, tent going for three, three days, I think, down at Te Marae. Monday to Thursday was going and we had people uh, um, flocking and not next to them you've got the politicians debating, you've got debates and all kinds of things, you've got people um, um, expressing their opinions quite boldly and soundly, amen, eh? Amen. That's our job as the church to be, you know, we weren't doing it but we were worshipping, but um, that was happening there and, and we've got a whole lot of five quarter going, people going, talking, debating about this thing they call the Treaty of Waitangi and what it means for us today. And it's no different to what was happening back in Jesus' time, <laughs> in Paul's time. No different. But family, there's a time coming of oneness, of unity. And church, we need to lead that way. We, we need to lead that way. Don't worry about the world. Don't worry about the world. But we need to be leading that way. But that's not what I'm talking about today. What I'm talking about today comes straight from 2 Corinthians 5. So if you've got your word, open your word to 2 Corinthians 5, uh, chapters 11 to 21. And we're going to be moving and talking, what, what, is, a, what is a kingdom builder? Eh? <laughs> what does a kingdom builder look like? What does a kingdom builder do? And I've heard people say, well, we're all building the kingdom. Yes, we are. Yes, please. I agree we are. But a kingdom builder is something that is, that is, that is far different than just idle talk and chatter. A kingdom builder is about the kingdom of God. Nothing less than the kingdom of God. And when I thought about this, uh, well, what I was going to bring today, and I'm still not quite sure what I'm going to bring today, um, but it's going to look something uh, of, of, of the kingdom of God and what does it mean for us. And family, today uh, we're going to be challenged. Uh, as, I, as I'm challenged, when I, when, I, when I started doing the study on this, I was challenged. So family, look, the mercy seat is available. So if you're feeling that you need to come and kneel before the Lord at any time, don't, don't wait for special time for that to happen. If you, think, if you feel the Spirit of God is moving and ministering to you, then come and kneel and someone will pray for you. Don't worry, you, I, I won't be offended by that. I'd be encouraged by that. Does that make sense? Yeah, you're with me? You're with me. That's good. So if you had time to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 11 to 21, and we might, we might pan over to 6, 1 to 2. So if you've got your word with you, and you should have your word with you, your word should be paramount. If you've got it on your phone, amen. If you've got it in front of you in hard copy, amen. If you haven't, make sure you bring your word. Because you need to check people like me out. You need to check me out. Because you might think, what the heck is this guy on? He's crazy. But you need to check me out. Did anyone check out what the general was saying last week? Anyone check out the general? Amen. We should be checking it out. What the general brought was pure gospel message. Nothing less than that. So hopefully you're encouraged by that as a Salvation Army, as we begin to move through this land, as we begin to move through this world, that we'll see people's lives transformed and changed. But it comes from something deep within us. It has to. 
It cannot just be something think about or thought about. And I look at Amplify and I look at those young people and I think, amen. Hey, you know, look at that. Hey, that's what we need, eh? And we need our tradition. And we need this. We need it all together to make us whakawhanaungatanga. In other words, one whanau. So, so, why, so, so, so why do our young people have to go away and do that? And we bring, hey, so you, you guys did amazing this morning. I want to acknowledge your ministry to us this morning. It's beautiful. Beautiful uh, unity. Yeah, you can, you can clap. Encourage them. Encourage our young people. Rather than complain. No. Hard luck. Eh? So family, there's this thing of a kingdom builder. Straight away I went to, when I was, talking, when I was thinking about a kingdom builder, I was thinking about this. I am an ambassador of Christ. Straight away I went to that. So you can say it. Say, I am an ambassador of Christ. You're not saying that with um, surety or, 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 or ihi or wehi. Can you say it again? <laughs> Feels good, eh? Yeah? Feels good? You feel good about that? I felt good too. When I read that, I thought, I'm an ambassador of Christ. Ah, look at me. I'm an ambassador of Christ. But as you know, it just doesn't stop there. Because it's a good feeling, hey, to say I'm an ambassador of Christ. And I believe we all are. But read on what it says. If you read uh, uh, 20, sorry, I need my glasses. Trevor, put my name down for one sight. It says then, so we are, amb- we are Christ's ambassadors. Then I read forward because I needed to, and it says this, God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. It's an appeal. It's a plead. It's up there. Come back to God. That's what an ambassador does. An ambassador of the kingdom of God says that. Have we been saying that? Have we been pleading with people? That's a challenge. If we say we believe we're ambassadors, then sometimes we need to plead with people to come back to God. And that was the amazing thing of Waitangi. That was the message. Come back. Hey. Hook your mic. Come back. Come back to God. Come back to all that God has for us. So that sort of thought, hmm. Am I an ambassador of God now? Hey, made me think. This is, it speaks to me before it speaks to you. So I was very challenged by this. And then I, then I thought, well, to go forward, and now I've got to go back and read exactly what was Paul trying to say to us? What was Paul trying to communicate to us? And he was trying to communicate this, and here we go. If you're following with the word, uh, uh, verse 17. This me- I'm going backwards, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm going back from 20, and I'm moving my way back to get to the essence of what an ambassador is. So bear with me if you've got your word. A bit different reading God's word this way, isn't it? But sometimes I think we need to know the essence of what God is saying to us, and then we need to track it down. So what does that mean for me? We need to dig deep. We talked about this, I talked about the brother this morning about going deeper into God's word rather than the surface stuff that we sometimes get involved in because it sounds good. But what was Paul saying? He was saying this. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Amen? Amen. The old is gone and the new has begun. Yeah? You like that, eh? Yeah, praise God, yeah. But here's the thing, family. Sometimes I'm wondering if we want to give up the old life. Yeah? Let's be honest about this. Sometimes we like our old ways. Not saying that all our old ways are bad, but sometimes we like our old ways and we keep reverting back to them. And Paul has a lot to say about that in his letter. But what he's saying here is that The old is gone, your old life is gone, the new life has come. If you read the letter, what he's talking about is the Holy Spirit comes within you straight away. There's no waiting for the Holy Spirit to come in us when we receive Jesus into our life. And that is a truth. We all, if we love the Lord and we've accepted Jesus in life, we have the Holy Spirit within us already rearing to go. Yeah? Rearing to go, not just, not just, oh, I've got to take my time. Rearing to go. So the old life is gone and the new has begun. So God wipes the slate clean. 
All our sin of the past is forgotten. It's left behind. It was back there. No longer. It's no longer I that liveth, but Christ who lives in me. This is what he was trying to say, that our old life is gone. Slate white clean. To Jesus. That's what he says. Smith's Wigglesworth. Hey, who, know, who knows of Smith's Wigglesworth? Wow. Man, if only Smith, if only Smithy boy was here. Hey, yeah. Woo! Hey, amen. Powerhouse. Read his stuff. If you haven't heard of Smith's book, read his stuff. This should encourage us with the Holy Spirit. I believe what he believes. I don't believe nothing different that the Spirit of God is in us, so it arrives us, it gives us to a place, it brings us to a place where we can see mighty things happen for God's glory, not for our own glory. Hey, Smith's book, will you read it? There's some great stuff that he says. He says this, the flesh ceases and the spiritual person begins. The flesh ceases and the spiritual person begins. I love that. I, just, I, love the, I love the thought of that, the old going and the new coming. The spiritual begins. What does 16 say? Here we go. So we, stop, so we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. Evaluating others from a human point of view. Now we're getting challenges, eh, ambassadors? <laughs> Feeling a little bit challenged. I was challenged by this, say, eh? You know how the mind thinks, eh? We view others by the flesh instead of by the spirit. Gee, that didn't look very well today. Hey, they should have had a shave. Yeah? True. Hey, this is this what happens, eh? Yeah. I know for a reason my father used to say people used to go home and eat the pasta. Hey. Instead of having pasta, they used to eat the pasta. Hey, you can eat me all you want. Hey. Without the sauce. Without the sauce. <laughs> Without the sauce. Hey. Yeah, I'm only bringing you what God's word is saying, and because it's like I said, it speaks, it challenges my heart long before it challenges your heart. And it just challenged me. Peter, stop looking at people through, through the flesh and look at them through an ambassador of Jesus Christ and look at them through the spirit of what God sees. What does God see? Yell out, what does he see? He sees our heart. What else does he see? <coughs> Sorry? He sees Jesus. He sees Jesus. Yeah. Let's just change our thinking. No one's up here yet. I'm just wondering. Bear me. The human point of view means nothing. To us as ambassadors of Christ. Nothing. Because what does Jesus see? Number, uh, uh, verse 15 says, Instead we live for Christ, who died and was raised for them, because of what Jesus has done for me. These are my words. I will only live for Christ. Family, living for Christ is a hard thing. Yeah? Living for Christ is a hard thing. It means we've got to give up some stuff. Hey. Give up some of our religion. <laughs> hey, our religion. Remember, Paul's not talking to the world here. He's talking to who? Yell it out. It's okay. He's talking to the church. Oh, oh, what do you think talking to the church like that? Yeah? Paul is talking to the church. And he's reminding them we need to live for Christ because of what Christ has done for us. So cut out the religion, cut out the mamby pamby, and live for Christ. That's a challenge. Challenges me. Am I really, as an ambassador, living for Christ? 
Or is it just lip service? It's getting harder, right? This being an ambassador, we're getting more and more quieter. And that's what it did to me. It just got me more and more quieter. I'm sitting there going, oh. Either way, here we go. 14, it says this. Either way, Christ's love controls us. What? I've got to let Christ control me? I've been in charge of my life, and now I've got to let Christ control me? Christ controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have, we have all died. All died to our old life. So there must be something of God controlling us. Yeah? To be an ambassador, we must be controlled by something, and that is God's Holy Spirit. Oh, number 13. Here we go. This is going to be, a, this, is, this is okay for people like me, but for others, it's a little bit, a little bit harder. If it seems that we are crazy, eh? It is to bring glory to God. Sometimes our question is, do I have to do crazy things? Yes, you do. We do crazy things, say. Hey? True? Yeah. William Barclay says this. Uh, he's, he's, in one of his stories he tells, he talks about William Booth um, leaving to go overseas, and there were all these salvationists with their timbrels, bands, and playing, and this young man is watching them, and he's going, what, what a nutter. <laughs> Hey, thinking, what's all this hollabaloo about? What a nutter. And so this young man went and saw William Booth on the boat and said, what's that all about? I'm very disturbed by that, that that, that would happen, that all these people would be, you know, the gospel message, and all this, even before he leaves the shore, he's preaching this gospel. I'm, very, I'm, not, I'm not sure about that. He's a Christian man going to a church. I won't say what church he was going to, but he was going to a church, and he's asking the question, but William Booth says to him, he says, young man, son, he says to him, if I could stand on my hands and play the timbre with my feet, just for one more soul, I would do it. Paul was under a huge attack from people who were saying he, they were crazy. This is why he's writing this letter to the church. He's, he's, he's a nutter. Don't listen to him. His ways aren't right. Uh-huh. And if we are in our right minds, it is for your benefit. I love that, eh? Paul, a beautiful way of saying that. It's getting harder, isn't it, to be ambassador? Oh, number 12, this is beautiful. Uh, verse 12 says, So you can answer those who brag about having a, particular, uh, a spectacular ministry rather than having a sincere heart. I've got a spectacular ministry. You see what I'm doing? Hey, you know, this is how we think sometimes, eh? Hey? But Paul says, I'd rather you have a sincere heart. Yeah? Some of this ministry stuff is all stuff, but it's lost with this on the end of it, having a sincere heart. As an ambassador, we've got to have a sincere heart. How's your heart? How's my heart? It's getting harder, isn't it? And this is the one that got me. Verse 11. Because we understand our fearful responsibility to the Lord. Now this got me, family. I just wanted to talk to you about being an ambassador because that's, because that's pretty straightforward and easy. But this, this verse got me. It brought me to my knees. I wasn't even sure if I was going to bring this message to you today, but I, I believe I need to bring it because we understand our fearful responsibility to the Lord. So where does this fearful responsibility come from? It comes from judgment. It's all in God's word. If you look back at um, 2 Corinthians uh, 5, 9 to 10, it says this. So whether we are here in this body or away from this body, our goal is to what? Please him. For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or the evil we have done in this earthly body. 
This is where that fearful responsibility comes from. We are all going to be judged. Amen? Amen. I'm looking forward to judgment day. I am looking forward to my judgment day. I can't wait. You might think I'm a nutter. Yes, but I can't wait for judgment day. Because that means I'm one step closer to being to eternity with my heavenly father. One day in the kingdom. Amen, brother. This is where it begins. Understanding this. That one day we will all give an account. Church. Remember this this revelation? There's different types of judgment. The world is already being judged. It says that, eh? They call it the great white throne judgment in Revelation. Read about it. It's all in there. It'll tell you what it looks like. But then, family, we, God's people, are going to be judged. And that brings about our fearful responsibility, knowing that that's going to happen. Yeah? You're not sure? Yeah? That should bring us to our knees. No, we're not. That's the world. That's the world. We're not. That's the world's going to be judged there. But we are going to be judged for the good and the bad. What Paul was talking about here is this. He was talking about, uh, in Greek times, um, the, 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 the forum, the platform, or, or the, I think it's called the bema, was a place where, where the courts were held. Yes. Uh, where the courts were held. And then people would be judged there. But it's also a place of reward. Yeah? Hey, the Olympic, yeah, getting my reward, same seat. That's where it's going to come from. But you're right, the world is going to be judged. That's the great white throne. Read it, it's in Revelation, but there's a time when we will be judged. Yeah, amen, I love it. Can't wait. So how's how's it sounding like being an ambassador now? Sound good, Phil? (laughs) Amen, Phil. So, family, I know the reason why I need to be Christ's ambassador. Because there's an urgency. This is all about urgency for us to be ambassadors of the kingdom of God. One day we'll all, we'll all stand before my, well, one day I will stand before my king to be judged. That brings about a fearful responsibility. But, family, here's the fear. I'm talking about a cleansing fear, an awe and reverence for God, not a fear of what I'm going to get a whack around the, around the ears, but a fearful an awe, reverence of God. And I'm thinking we're losing that fear from that perspective of, of God and who God is, this, this awesome God, eh? Yeah, we're losing it. We are losing it as the church. And that's going to be one of our judgment things that we're going to talk about. That I tread carefully when I come into the throne room of God. I preach carefully when I come into the throne room of God. eh? Because I'm going to have to give my account for what I bought for you today. I'm giving my account for that. God's going to ask me, what did you bring? Getting goosebumps. As I should. This is about awe and reverence for our God. There's some scriptures which I won't go into, but um, if you want to, want to know those scriptures, come, come and talk to me. Proverbs 1.7 says this, The fear of the Lord is the foundation of truth and knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. Proverbs 16.6 says this, Unfading love and faithfulness make atonement for sin, but fearing the Lord, oh, sorry, by fearing the Lord we avoid evil people, because I've got a fear of the Lord of who I mix with and what I do. So knowing this family, I'm now bringing us into into something that is good. And what does it mean to to be uh, an ambassador for Christ? And it's this, an ambassador, we represent Jesus our King. Yeah? We represent Jesus our King. Our life is spent among people who speak a different language. True? Who have a different tradition and have a different way of life. That is our life on this earth. We live in this world. We take part in all of life, don't we? We work in this world. True? We bank in this world. We buy our food from the supermarket in this world. But families, we are citizens of heaven. So we're we're looking to there, but we're here. We're in there, but we're here. Does that make sense? 
I try, try and live my life like I'm already in heaven. And what does that look like? You guys look like angels. <laughs> yeah. Amen. You're singing like angels today. That's what heaven is going to be like. I live my life like I'm in there. But I'm, only a, I'm a citizen of heaven, but I've got to live in this world. If you want to go back even further, read, read, read about um, in, in Corinthians, just the next one above that, about the new bodies we're going to get. Hey, our spirit, yeah, everyone's thinking, oh, now I'm going to get a new body. Yeah, we're going to get a new body. Yeah, we're not going to be bodyless. Say, the spirit needs to be somewhere. And Paul says, we're going to get a new body. Yeah, amen? amen. Look, at, look at the body you've got now. Look how trim and fine I am. I'm going to lose this, say. Hey. Yeah? I'm going to get a new body. But I'll still look after the one I've got. Hey, hey, much of Bill, I'll still look after the one I've got. Amen? So I can be a witness to those around me. True? Sorry, I've got a thing. As an ambassador, we speak of our own country. Our voice is one of kingdom, the kingdom of God. This is our message, our decision, and our policies, which we tell others of. Yes, there'll be times we've got to make a stance and speak for Jesus in a world that needs Jesus. So we need to make that stance as ambassadors. That's what an ambassador does, doesn't they? Yeah? Yeah? We must bring the message of Christ to human situation. Family, we must check our speech at all times. Yeah? Hands up who would like me to look at their Facebook page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of you have, yeah, I'm happy to look at your Facebook page. I'm not on Facebook, and there's a reason why that is, so people don't know who I am. Do their homework on me. So there's something about that for me. I think, hmm, yeah. It's funny, when we come here, no one knew who we were. We came to Whangarei, eh? Because I wasn't on Facebook. Me and Jenny are on Facebook. I like it that way. Because people might get a bit afraid of what they're going to get. But this is what you've got. Yeah, and we're going to move forward in the kingdom of God. But family, check your, check, 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 check your texts. You know? When, when someone places something up there, how do I respond to that? I need to respond out of a sense of love. Eh? True? Do I always talk about of the problem and not the solution? That's a trade saying. Don't bring your problem, bring your solution. Us who are tradespeople know that, yeah? You never walked up to the boss with your problem. Uh, you just got bounced out of there pretty quick and told, fix it. Yeah, true? Or find something else to do. I'm tired of Christians who bring their problems and not their solutions. That means you're not talking to God. You're not reading God's word. You're not getting in there. Does that make sense? How are we going, ambassadors? Are we feeling a bit better now? Yeah, good. I'm glad you're feeling better. Do I use the word of God as my message in human situations? Is my talk different when I'm around the company of non-believers? Ah, that's a challenge, eh? But is my talk the same? As an ambassador of God, ambassador of, of, of Christ, is my talk the same wherever I go? Yeah? Here we go. The honour of, the, the honor of the kingdom of God is in the hands of the ambassador. Fear me? The honour of this kingdom is in, the, is in our hands. True? Do you know, Christian, you're a sermon in shoes? The kingdom will be judged... By our actions. By our actions. That's how the kingdom is judged. Our words are listened to. Our deeds are, are watched. True? When people know you're a Christian, man, they watch you like a hawk, eh? They do a better job than us sometimes. They can tell us all about what we should be doing opposed to, you know, does it make sense? Yeah, well, now when I get a non-believer telling me that, I say, well, you seem to know a lot about it. Come and join me. You'd be a great asset to have. Yeah. Don't see them again. I don't know what that's about. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. Remember, we're works in progress. We're trying to do the best we can. We falter, eh? But it's out of God's grace and our love and a sense of repentance that God does something for us. What we do will speak loudly about the kingdom we represent and more than that, about the king we represent. Our message will always be heard in the context of character. Our message will always be heard in the context of our character.
to Femi, I finish with this. As God's partners, uh, this is Second uh, Corinthians 6, 1 to 2. As God's partners, we beg you not to accept... Sorry, glasses. We beg you not to accept this marvellous gift of God's kindness and ignore it. The gift of eternal life, we ignore it. The gift of being an ambassador, we ignore it. For God says, just at the right time I heard you. On the day of salvation, I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now. And this is my favorite line. Is today the day of your salvation? When I give the gospel message to people I meet and tell them about God's love, I always end up with this. So is today the day of, of sorry. To, is today the day of your salvation? Some of you are sitting here today. Because that was my challenge. Is today the day of your salvation? Are we still feeling good about being ambassadors? Yeah. You must be. Yeah? Um, those in uniform, are you, are, you, are you happy about being an ambassador? You should be. Our covenant says that. <laughs> yeah? Our covenant says that. So as our lovely young people come and minister to us in song, family, this, this is open. I'm not going to say much more than that. Um, but I'm proud to be an ambassador of Christ. Yeah? I love it. I love being an ambassador for Christ. But Femi, um, today you may be, may be thinking about that. You may be not sure about that. Here's a place to come and kneel before God. We've got anointing oil. Someone will anoint you. Look, if, 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 you, if you're feeling that, man, I'm, I'm struggling with some things in my life, come, come and kneel and come, someone will pray for you. Someone will come and anoint you. But I'm asking you to come today. I'm, I'm pleading, as Paul would say. I plead with you. If you're not sure, then come. Let God minister by the power of his Holy Spirit. So family, we're just gonna we're just gonna spend some time singing together and um, and relaxing. And this place is open. So may God bless you, family. Um, can I be honest with you? That was a hard message to bring. I'm I'm had it. The Māori I have a term, called po. Done. I've left it all here. So I and I invite you today to, to respond to it if you want to. If you don't want to, fine. Lord, my conscience is clear. Hey, Paul says that, eh? My conscience is clear. So thank you, Lord. Praise your name. Lift up your name. Exalt your name. Lord, we want to be ambassadors for you. We want to strive. We want to see this world one for Jesus. We want to see the kingdom of God come. We want to see every nation, every time come and be all that you ask us to be. Lord, you call us to be ambassadors for you. Lord, we put our hands up. We will come and stand before you and say, here I am. I want to be ambassador for you. We want to see the, the, the lame walk, the blind see, and the dead rise. Lord, hear our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name.